all the reindeer came hurtling into view as they excitedly approached the cabin. Whoa, lads, slow down, we're nearly home. Thank heavens for that, shouted Blitzen. The smell is getting intense. The sleigh swooped down and came to a halt at the front of the cabin. Cupid nodded his antlers, and all the reins disappeared, releasing the reindeer from the sleigh. At last, some fresh air, said Blitzen. I think I'll sleep outside tonight, till those mince pies have worn off. Well, I ate the last one four hours ago, so I should be better by now. Huh? Oh, pardon me, perhaps not, said Donna. Glyn, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. You're looking well, and you're looking sharp. <laughs> when's, your, when's your appointment at Specsavers? <laughs> no, I think you do look good tonight. Yeah, uh, well, it's night time as we're recording this. I don't know what time it is. Anyone's watching this. Santa returns then. I was trying to top them up. Is this the fourth book we've done? This is the fifth. This is the fifth. Let's see. We did Santa. We did Trevor the Tractor. We did Fart Man. Grumps. Yeah. This is number five. And this this is the first sequel we've done. Because the first one we did was Santa's Disastrous Delivery. And it was yeah. great to get the band back together, really, as far as the characters are concerned. For me... As far as the, the characters are, are, are concerned, because there were some new characters in this one. Well, talk us through the inspiration for this one. Now, this is, it's a kid's book, but you know what? It's not really. It's, it's an entertain. It, it is for kids, yes. But it's entertaining as all your books are. In fact, I would argue that Grumps perhaps isn't a kid's book. It's that. Uh, the <laughs> comedy is that um, relevant to adults. But anyway... This is essentially a kid's book, but it's a lot of fun. Um, tell us about how this differs to the first one and what the inspiration was for this. Uh, well, well I, I found in the end Santa was such a brilliant character to write. I thought, I can't, I can't just let it lie at that. And then I can't, I can't think how it came about, but the, I had the idea that, Okay, he's done all his deliveries and it's all finished. And so, what does he what does he do for the rest of the year? What does he do when he gets home? Yeah. So that, that was the initial thought, um, and and then it just developed from there. You know where where he actually where he actually arrives home and Mrs. Mrs. Santa's standing Sandra away. Claus, Sandra yeah. Claus, you've called it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's she's uh, she's standing waiting for the arrival knowing knowing full well how oh what's the word uh, just just well just what a, such a bumbling idiot he is you know just, right yeah as, as 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 uh, all wives would describe all husbands i would think um because well, yeah. i i get a lot of that you know mm. i was in fact, I was told today, Julie said to me today that, you know, because she's, she's, she's got arthritis in her fingers and stuff. And she said, I said, all right, I said, besides that, is there anything else going on? And she said, yeah, there's lots, but I'm not going to tell you because you just make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so he gets home and Sandra Claus, she's kind of pleased to have him back safe, but... Isn't it? Isn't it? It's but it's uh, yeah. back. It's just yeah. the cop or the storm. Yeah, and is and in this one, is he returning home from the actual disastrous delivery in the first book, or is this from another uh, mission? This this is the follow on, um, as as he as he left the tailors and and chased after after the snowman and the policeman and everything else that was going wrong. Chaos. Chaos in the first book. Yes, <laughs> this 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 was him returning home uh, after it was all over. Yeah. Um, so, do you think there'll be another one? Oh, I'm already writing it. Yeah. Excellent. And then, yeah. when you've got a few, will you bundle them? Because they seem to go well on uh, audio books. When you bundle a series of books, yeah. 
And they tell me the reason is because most audiobook sales are not people who stump up the money to buy the audiobook, you know, punters. They're actually the people who've got the Audible memberships on Audible. Oh, and they, right. get a, they get 12 oh, credits a year. So they pay a monthly fee, which I think is about 10 quid. I could be wrong on that. I think it's about 10 quid. Let's, let's for argument's sake, say it's 10 quid, with apologies to Audible if we've got the price wrong. But it's around about 10 quid in the UK. And most audiobook sales go to members of Audible who use their credit. So they basically, of all the probably millions, certainly thousands of audiobooks that come out in a month, they have to pick one every month that they're going to use their credit on. And so what they tend to do is they look at longer books because they're all the same price. It's still one credit. So right. they seem they think they're getting better value with a longer book. It, they're not because you can have quality in a shorter book. You, yeah. can have a, you can have a boring long book and an exciting shorter <laughs> book. You know what I mean? But anyway... Yeah. So they tend to look at how long they go. So if you bundle a few books together and sell them as a bundle, although in the marketplace when somebody buys one, they pay more for the bundle than they do for individual books. The people who are Audible members pay the same price, the same 10 quid. So they think they're getting better value. Well, they are getting better value than buying the individual books. Oh. And as most audiobook sales go to all people with Audible memberships, I've done a lot of bundles, series, um, science fiction series, romance series. I mean, these most of them are like you know six books at least in the in the series, yeah. and you know they'll they'll then get a longer thing, and they really do sell well, really do sell well. So it's something you should think about is once you've got a few up. I mean, three would be <coughs> enough for a bundle, but it just gets that it just gets the 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 audio the length of the audio is longer. And yeah. there's an extra value in the mind of somebody using up the membership because they only get to do one book a month. And so oh, they right. go, you know what I mean? So it's, it's worth thinking about doing uh, as an author because there's no extra work at all on your part. It's all recorded. I just edit them together into the bundle. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very easy job to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you should think about that when the time comes. Yeah. So. He's got he's got home from the North Pole, and obviously you know my favourite character in, in the books is one of the reindeer. It's Blitzen, who who I made German, and he has to fly in the uh, reindeer squad behind one who farts when he eats mince pies. <laughs> and so there's a bit of that going on. So as soon as Blitzen appears. It doesn't take long. He's complaining, yeah, in in a very German way, yeah. And I like that. It was good to it was good to know that he was back in it, yeah. yeah. But you've got you've got elves and that in this one as well, haven't you? Oh, they, these are all the workers. These are yes. all the workers that produce all the toys and do all the all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, but. Uh, and Santa has a bit of a problem because he inhales some dodgy stardust, doesn't he? Yeah, because of because of the problem they had with the tires and they were chucking all this stardust about everywhere. He got covered in it. And right. Then, uh, as he walked in the house, took his coat off. It all fell off all over the all over the mat. And it's magic. Oh well, yeah. So um, yeah, in in his. Um, uh, what's the word? Well, it, well, in in his uh, just sheer terror of 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 what uh, Sandra's going to say about her immaculately kept house, he uh, it quickly picks the mat up and sweeps it all underneath before she sees it. And of course, that's that's the uh, that's the preliminary for everything to go wrong. Yeah, and and it does. In spectacular style, as usual. <laughs> yeah. Do you sit there thinking, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> Are you catastrophizing when you're coming up with the plot for the books? Well, I just get some. A lot of the time, I'll, I'll just get one, uh, one idea, 
and and then you think well how can how can how can how can this play out how can i make this worse just, just how, <laughs> how dramatically awful can this turn into yeah uh, yeah so uh, sometimes it will just come to me literally straight away and other times i'll i'll write a bit and then think about something else yeah Last night, I woke up about five o'clock this morning, went went to the toilet, as you do, and I came back lying in bed, and I suddenly thought about some other plot for the story. I thought, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, OK, I could use that later. So sometimes some, it will just, it'll just, just bits of storyline will just come to me. So, so it doesn't involve Santa getting up for a wee in the middle of the night, does it, or anything like that? <laughs> Because there are some things maybe you shouldn't touch. He is Santa when all is said and done. You know what I mean? There's go <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah. That might be an idea for this storyline. Yes, that could that could that could be something I could play with. All right, but that one will probably be next Christmas, will it? Uh, possibly, possibly middle of the year. Leading okay. Up to all right. Christmas. Yeah, because I'm looking forward to seeing how the first, because I think the first Santa book we did, we it came out in January. So it's had a bit of a wait to get to its peak selling period. But this yeah. one, Santa Returns, is right on the money now. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you're watching this, you're probably watching this before Christmas in the, in the later part of the year. We're recording, oh, to be fair, to, full disclosure, we're recording this on the 6th of November. So... You've got, play we're right in the Christmas shopping season and it would make an ideal gift. It's a gift that keeps giving because you can, you can play it every year at Christmas. You know what I mean? It's not like once you're done with it, you're done with it. This is like the, uh, the audio book version of The Sound of Music or The Great Escape or The Wizard of Oz. Because uh, every year you can bring it back and everybody's happy to, to to enjoy it again even though they've seen it 10 times this could be one of those couldn't it well let's hope so yeah fingers crossed yeah i, I, I actually sent it to uh, a friend of mine uh, phil up in you know, he's, I, I thought he was in he's from glasgow but he's living in liverpool at the minute and i uh, i sent him the book and uh, i got a reply from him. he said oh it's it it's brilliant. He said it, it's funnier than the first one. It is you know, very, very funny. Yeah. I always knew you were mad, but this just proves it. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I love it. I look. What? Like I say, I, I love the getting the band back together, but then also to see another side of Santa. And the thing with Santa, especially in this one, but also in the first one too, he doesn't go out of his way to cause chaos in any way. It just, it's his fault, but <laughs> it's, it's not, um, Tentative. it's Tentative. not malicious or, in fact, he's barely aware of, uh, of what he's, of, of just the, the carnage going on around him. And mm. I like that about him. Was that a deliberate choice to make him like that? Oh yeah. 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 He's just an innocent bystander to the, to the chaos he causes without realizing <laughs> it. It's, it's, that could be the sales slogan. Santa, an innocent bystander to the chaos he causes. <laughs> That's your strap line for your, for your, uh, what's this book about? Yeah. Sa Santa, once again, an innocent bystander for the chaos he causes. Yeah. I do like that. I do yeah. like that. That is good. And how did you find the experience of the, turning this book, uh, the fifth one we've worked on together, into an audio book? Uh, oh, yeah, all right, yeah. It it it, um, it gets a lot easier the the, the more the more we do. But, uh, oh, 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 hello. That'll be the neighbours. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think it's Stephen Spielberg, but I'll ring him back later. Oh, oh, is he? Yeah. Well, he's bound to be interested because we've started. Out. That's a serious point, though, because I think they would make great cartoons. Your books. Have you ever considered that of getting them animated? Yeah, yeah. I think I think they make a brilliant cartoon. It sounds a bit big-headed me saying it, but I think, uh, yeah, I think they 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 could be so visual. Yeah, yeah. Because I. When I read them, I see I see the I see them as a cartoon. I, I you know it's um, 
I visualize the stuff I'm reading. I think because I have to do the characters and it helps a little bit. I don't know. I can't help it. It just it is there. And I think they would make an excellent. So, yeah, well, t I hope you'd, uh, you, you managed to call Spiel back in plenty of time because he's pushing it to get it out for this Christmas, to be honest. I know they've they've improved with CGI and stuff since Toy Story, I think. They've actually got things working a lot quicker than they used to when they had to draw and paint everything. But yeah. I think we're not. you are pushing it for this Christmas. But maybe for next Christmas, you know, and they could, maybe once you get the next one out, he could bundle it and the three of them could become a feature-length film. In fact, yeah. you should put that on the title of the next one, soon to be a major motion picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, coming to a theatre near you. I think uh, I think it'll go really well. All right, so it's out now. It is the latest in the series. You don't even have to have heard the first Santa book, Santa's Disastrous Delivery, to enjoy this one. But maybe you want to get the two of them together um, if, you, if you can do that. Download the two of them. They're available on Audible and... Apple Books, which I still keep calling iTunes, where apparently it's not iTunes anymore, it's Apple Books, no, no, no. and Amazon, and uh, get them on there. There's a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, so you can click on there and you can download it uh, from Amazon. You've got the next book in the works, the next Santa book. What is the next thing you're working on then, Glyn? Well, I don't want to give too much of the plot away. It is a, it is a, a, a step away from the traditional Christmas mayhem. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh yeah we just be just as just as chaotic but in a different a different this, this is the next santa book you're talking yeah. about okay. yeah right. uh, yeah yeah don't want to say too much at the minute i don't want to give the plot away don't so. say too much away you don't know who's watching and who's <laughs> listening because <laughs> you know people people see successful authors and they want to uh, they want a piece of the action uh, you can't blame them, but you know you've got to keep it. Uh, you've got to keep it real. Um, all right. And are you working on anything else in between that, or is that the the next actual thing you're working on? Is the next Santa book? I've had ideas for for another book for some time, which which is completely different. It's, I suppose it's more it's more in the uh, more more in 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 the vein of of, of grumps. Yes. It's a complete departure, um, but that, that's that's a different scenario completely. Um, okay, well that yeah. sounds interesting. Is it is it Grumps the character or is it a whole different thing? Uh, it's a different, diff totally different. Wow, well. well, and are there any plans for a, a follow up to Fart Man? Because that was a good book. Um, yeah, probably. I've not thought about it at the minute, but I, I, I deliberately put my teeth in. I deliberately. Uh, ended it where he could quite easily come back in the future and he probably will yeah but, um, that um i've just, I've just gotta just gotta find the storyline for him to for him to come back again yeah yeah, yeah again again he, I, I i found him such a brilliant character to, to, to write it, it'd be it'd be a shame not to use him again yeah all right, well, look out for much more from Glyn Davis. But right now, the one you need to get is Santa Returns. Get it now in time for Christmas. So you're all set. And get the other one, Santa's Disastrous Delivery, and then you've got the two of them. Because if you just listen to the one, or if you play it to the kids, I mean, you know, Christmas, often there's some travel involved in Christmas, meeting up with the outlaws and all the rest of it. And if you've got kids in the car... You've got to keep, and you know, the radio over Christmas, trust me, I was on the radio over Christmas. I know how much effort goes into shows that you put on at Christmas. <laughs> and so you want something good to listen to in the car. Well, if you get these two, you're all set and it's the Christmas theme. So even though you're driving to, you know, you're in between locations, you've still got the Christmas vibe alive because you're listening to something Christmassy. Santa's, disa Santa's Disastrous Delivery, which was the first one, and this new one, Santa Returns. Doesn't matter which order you listen to them in, they're still going to work. So check those out. Glenn, continued success, and I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks a lot.